Okay, so now we're going to move on to some switch leads. Um, what Brian's doing here is he's going to make a sort of a bridge, um, kind of splitting off uh, uh, one of the wires so that it goes to two places. Why? Because then he can actually connect uh, both of his switches to the ground lead um, over here on uh, the crystal focus board. That way he can actually use the, the ground lead to control both the switches because um, if you know anything about crystal focus and you've been paying attention to wiring guides, um, most all your components are going to have to come back to uh, the negative lead or the ground lead. Okay. Um, the ground lead on the board is uh, good for switches, um, exactly like what we're doing, and maybe one indicator LED or something like that. Um, other than that, you should lead everything back to the battery's negative line. Okay. However, you don't want to have a whole bunch of wires sitting on one pad on the board. If you want to do anything, you want to make some kind of a bridge or a Y, y kind of connection, just like uh, he's doing here. You could have it split into several wires, you know, and you could make it go into um, three or four or whatever. And sometimes you'll need that when you have stuff like a motor, four indicator LEDs, you have your batteries, you have this thing and that thing, your switches. You're going to get a lot of um, components that you need to add a... Uh, uh, negative leads to. Okay, so he's just going to heat shrink on this one. There we go. Boom. That way, that one's just out of the way and taken care of. You know, sometimes you can wait until the very end to do all those, but it's entirely up to you on how you want to get that set up. And now he'll attach this newly wide, um, wide out, whatever you want to call it, bridged uh, wire onto the ground lead. <coughs> If you need to find out where the ground lead is on your crystal focus board, you're going to want to check the wiring uh, guide. We're not really going to be able to point that out here. It's just too close. I had more steady hands. Yeah, it could be. I think it's because the board needs to have something on it. I would set something on the board so it'll sit still. As long as it's strong. There you go. Okay. There's the strong connection there. And he's gonna test that out. And I know it's difficult when we have the camera and you know he's gotta pick up the board to wire it. It becomes kinda difficult to, for me to keep everything in the frame, but you get the idea. Now you can see that there is the um, ground connection and it splits off. That will go to, if you want to go ahead and Brian lay your switches right next to it. He's got one switch here and that's like his main power switch. And then he'll have these little tiny, where did that guy go? Those things are so small. The, um, the little tiny momentary switch, which is missing. <laughs> but whatever. So there'd be another switch. We'll just call this the other switch. That little thing. On the other end. Okay, so one of these days we'll find that little micro momentary. You can see this is a, you know, if any time we come out as too smooth or too organized, let us know. So, <laughs> but anyways, you guys get the idea. That's the uh, switch wiring, and then he would uh, wire up this switch and this one, and then of course uh, he'll have his auxiliary switch ready and his on-off uh, ready to go as well. Okay, on to the continuing wiring of the switches. There's the micro momentary. We didn't have that to go, but we found it. It's so small, um, and so we're all set for him to wire up additionally his uh, main power on switch. Uh, Brian's going to use what's called to also a read. What is it? A relay read switch? A read switch. Read switch. Okay. Um, which is a pretty cool type of thing. You guys will maybe enjoy that. Some people, you, you guys out there, will know what that is. Okay. So he's just going to go ahead and start. And again, you can see there's that Y setup that's attached to ground, and now he can just attach the uh, leads together and get the uh, switch leads on the board attached as well. Strong lead there. And you know, we'll time compress some of this stuff sometimes just because sometimes it takes a little bit longer and you don't need to see where it just takes forever to solder one thing up or whatever. So 
That's looking good. So that was your reed attached to the other button, right? Yep. Okay, very good. Hidden right in there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see the reed in there because you'll see it's under here. It's actually hidden under some heat shrink and we decided to have it set up that way so that, you know, it's totally isolated. There's nothing that's going to get involved in the reed switch. And again, if you don't know what the reed switch is, don't worry about it. It's just kind of a, you'll see later. It's a fancy way that Brian's going to put a saber together. It's going to be kind of cool, man. And then on the other leg, so the wire goes here. And of course, one of the legs is going to go to ground on the on the crystal focus board, and of course, the other leg of the switch, depending on what switch, will go to either aux auxiliary or the uh, power on. Okay. This is for I believe the aux switch. Yeah, from the board positioning the way I see it, it looks like that's all the other end. And to kind of help you if it does, I don't know if it will, but it's really, when you look at the pins, depending on what order you look at them, for the switches, you just think about using one, three, and five. That's really helpful. Uh, depends on how you look at it, from what order, but going from the on-off lead, which is the first one on one side of the board, if we consider that as, you know, solder point one, then three is ground, and five is the uh, auxiliary. So if you just deal with those things, it's kind of easy to kind of stay focused on switches and get those wired up. Something that can be really frustrating about this kind of thing if you don't have experience is if you just think of everything all at once. If you're like, oh my god, where am I going to put the batteries? How am I going to do this? Oh my god, what about the motor? What about that? What? No. That's not how you want to approach it. You want to approach it one thing at a time. Decide what you want to wire up and stick with it. Focus on it. Then go to something else. Right now we're focusing on the switches. Okay. You can see too he's got some shrink wrap or I always call it shrink wrap whatever it's called heat shrink in place and it's ready to be you know slid over and all that. Sometimes when it's too close to the solder or if the solder uh, joint is a little large it may prohibit you from sliding the stuff over but that's not a big deal you can kind of trim at it later and just kind of I guess the best way is to say just use a little bit of good elbow grease on it a little elision and you know you can uh, make things work. It's not always going to be perfect. You know? If only it were that simple, where every single solder you made, just boom, snap, next, 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 everything was perfect. But you'll make mistakes, and for example, it's pretty easy to forget to put the um, heat shrink on. I've done that before, where I've wanted to have it on, and I completely forgot. So, you just do your best with it. See, like in this case, we can use the needle nose, nose pliers in an entirely different way, and just hold the board down in place. Um, also, uh, to note, it just occurred to me, what we're all doing to the board here is perfectly safe because there isn't even a battery involved right now. It's probably one of the last things we'll put together. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but it's recommended to leave it where the battery leads essentially go nowhere, as you can see over here. Just a quick disconnect, as we, you saw in a previous setup. But um, that way, you know, the board's completely isolated. There's no voltage going on in there, and you don't have anything weird like where you could short the board out on itself and destroy the component. That would be bad. So um, it's good to maybe think about doing the batteries last. That way you can, you know, put things on the board. You're pretty safe. Uh, in terms of the uh, electro, you know, static kind of charges that you can carry, yeah, you got to be careful. But in general, you're touching some metal before you go into it. You got your tools. You should be good unless you're you know, run it around with your shoes and wipe them on the carpet and then go touch the board. Um, you know, you're going to be pretty good on not carrying an electrostatic uh, charge. Okay. Heat up the, the uh, heat shrink a little. Boom. That one's good. And you just continue just cleaning it up. Okay. And we'll move on to something else.